Statistics and Excel confidence interval example using the T distribution. Get ready and some coffee because if we want to get futuristic, we need statistics and Excel. We are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we'll basically build this from a blank worksheet. But if you do have access, three tabs down below. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our Accounting Rocks product line. If you're not crunching cords using Excel, you're doing it wrong. A must-have product. Because the fact, as everyone knows, of accounting being one of the highest forms of artistic expression means accountants have a requirement, the obligation, a duty to share the tools necessary to properly channel the creative muse. And the muse, she rarely speaks more clearly than through the beautiful symmetry of spreadsheets. So get the shirt, because the creative muse, she could use a new pair of shoes. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. So example, practice blank tabs. The example, in essence, the answer key, the practice tab having pre-formatted cells so you can practice the practice problem with less Excel formatting. The blank tab, the one we will be working on, as you can see here is blank. We'll build this from a blank worksheet practicing our Excel tools as we construct it. Let's go to the example tab to get an idea of what we will be building. We're gonna imagine a population which we can think of on average how many widgets are in a box of widgets, for example. We will actually construct our population data using Excel and then take some statistics about it, such as the standard deviation and mean of the population and then we will imagine that we don't have that information so that we can then take our sample. We're gonna take a relatively uh, small sample here and then run our analysis on that sample to get a confidence interval which might allow us to make an expression that you can imagine we put on the box of widgets for example saying something like the customer can expect average items of 2,000 343 widgets within a margin of error of 195. Some type of phrase like that based on this type of analysis using the confidence intervals. Noting here that this is a little bit different than we might think of in a normal hypothesis test situation where we might already have the mean and we're trying to prove or disprove that that mean is correct. Now we're, we're saying we're going to take our sample and basically assume that is the middle point and then try to determine how confident we might be as to whether or not that is the middle point. So just to look at a differentiation between these two thought processes that are similar types of problems, if we already had the mean, we, we can make basically a bell curve, right, and try to say, if I took a sample, how far away from it from the mean is and is that enough evidence for me to reject the hypothesis basically of the mean here we're basically saying that we don't have the mean so we're going to take our sample and say if that's the middle point how sure can we be that that we're somewhere in that middle point that we're going to be around that middle point can i get a confidence interval one way that we might think about that is to say let me do a hypothesis test for every space around that mean that I got and see if the tail still fits in in there so I can make my confidence interval from like peak to peak or the tail to the tail. But that's a little tedious to do. What I'd like to do is assume that that's the middle point and then make basically a bell shaped curve around the middle point of the sample to try to help me with the confidence interval. So that's kind of the technique that we're going to do. But when we do that, especially when we have a small sample size, then we're typically going to use something that's a little bit different than the, the, the normal distribution, and that's going to be the T distributions. And the general idea you might want to think about with the T distributions are that we're trying to get that interval 
but the T distributions might be a little bit thicker on the tails, possibly to help us to be a little bit more confident. And we're not going to get into the details in terms of how exactly the T distributions were constructed, but that's going to give us the general idea and why we might use the T distribution. So that's the general idea. So let's get into it. We're going to go to the practice tab. It has some pre-formatted cells so you can uh, fill them out with less Excel formatting, but we're going to go to the blank tab over here and then construct this. Let's first format our cells, selecting the entire worksheet, right clicking on it. I'm going to format all of the cells. I'm going to go to the numbers up top. I like to make them currency, negative numbers bracketed, no dollar sign, no decimals to start off with. We will add the decimals as needed. I'm going to say, okay, home tab. And then I go to the font group. I make the whole thing bold. You might not need to do that, but I think that is easier to see for screen recordings. All right, so then I'm gonna put my, my pop data. So this is the pop data uh, to create to create the data set. So, so we're gonna say, let's just make the data set. Now we're gonna do this by going to the data tab and using the data analysis. If you don't have that, you can look up, you know, search it on your favorite browser or possibly chat GTP to see how to, to set that up uh, in Excel because it might not be there by default. So I'm going to, and then I'm going to say, this is going to be in my population data. Let's make this home tab font group. I'll make that black and white. And so then let's say that we're going to have uh, N is going to be the population count. So that'll be the pop count. And I want 500 uh, in my population. So, so then I'm going to say that the STD of the population, which is basically uh, sometimes represented with a sigma. I'm going to insert a sigma here so you can just see that. Uh, and we'll say to insert that. And that's going to, and then we're going to say what's, and we're also going to need the, the mean of the pop, the pop mean. And so let's say the standard deviation of the population, I'm going to say is 300. And then the mean, let's say is the 2,500. Now these are approximations that I'm going to use to get Excel to generate the actual information. I'm going to assume because we're talking about how many widgets are in a box that it, the distribution will typically be bell shaped because we're going to, you would think we would be aiming for like 2,500 or some number. And then we're going to have some variance of how many widgets are actually in the box that would have a distribution centered around that, which would normally be somewhat normal because it would be like a standard error kind of distribution. So I'm going to, I'm going to make this red because this is going to be my stuff that we're going to kind of assume that we don't know. So I'm going to make this red and, uh, this way. So then, and then I'm going to make a skinny C and let's use that to make a, a normal distribution. So this will be my population. I'm going to make this black and white for the header black and white and then center it then let's go to the uh, data and let's go to the analysis which again you might have to turn on so you can do a chat gtp search or something to figure out how to do that and then we can go into the uh we want to look at the uh random generation random number generation i'm going to say okay and the number of values i just want one on this one number of random numbers is going to be 500. You can't click on the cell here. I got to hard code it in 500. I want a normal distribution because I would expect that would be the normal way the, the data would be formatted. So I'm going to say normal distribution to get a normal distribution. I need the mean, which we're determining is going to be around 2,500. That's the center point and the standard deviation. We're going to say is 300. And then I'm going to say, give me the range output. I want you to put it right there. So make 500 sales from there. I'm going to say, okay. And then boom, there they are. Now it formats it back at the general formatting. So I'm going to format it again, right click on it, format the sales. I'm going to make it currency, negative numbers bracketed, no dollar sign, get rid of the decimals and okay. Home tab. I'm going to make it bold. So it matches the formatting that we have elsewhere. Notice uh, I'll also make it uh, make it the 
uh, red. Let's make it orange. Well, let's make it red. Because again, I'm imagining that we don't actually know this information, but I want to have a, in the back of our minds what the actual population is so that we have an idea of what we're, what we're doing in reality. So then I'm going to say, uh, let's take this skinny. I'm going to make it uh, format paint it and put it over here. And then I'm going to recalculate the population data. So this is what we used to create the population. And now this is the actual pop data that has been generated, which is going to be somewhat different because it was randomly generated. Also note that this random generation doesn't recalculate every time. Like if you use the formula uh, rand, you know, between that we've seen before. Okay. So data population. So let's run those stats again. Now I'm going to make this black and white, black, white. And we'll say this is the same data the the, the, the number. And I'm going to copy that down. And this is the actual data. So I'm going to say this equals the count. How many do we have? There should be 500 control shift down because we told it to give us 500. All right, there it is. Oh, hold on a sec. Why aren't I on one? I'm going to delete this stuff above. Why did I start on line seven? I don't know. I'm sorry. Let's delete that stuff and bring it back up to one. Standard deviation equals the STD of the population of P. So I'm going to say this is the entire population. Control shift down. In, in reality, it would be continuous, you would think, because we and notice it's a little different than 300 here because the 300 is it was randomly generated with that as the average standard deviation. And then the mean equals the mean or average. <laughs> I always do the average of the population. Control shift down, enter. And so it's a little bit different than the 2,500, right? So this is the actual data of the actual population that we're going to be imagining. But we're going to imagine that we don't have this information, which is why I made it red. So now let's take a sample. So let's take a sample of the population. We're going to get so many boxes of widgets and actually count them or something, right? So let's make this black and white. I'll make this black and white. And let's say we don't have that much of a sample because we're actually physically counting how many widgets are in them. <laughs> so we only want to do that like 10 times because there's a lot of widgets and we have to pay some, some union worker high wages to count them or something. So, so we're going to, and we're going to say those and then we're going to say, okay, now I want to pull the information in. I want to pull 10 random numbers from over here. There's a couple ways you can do this. You could put a random number generation next to it and shuffle these numbers randomly, but, or you can possibly just take the first 10 because they were randomly generated, right? But I would like to do it this way with an index function, which is useful to do. So I can say, give me an index tab and then the array is going to be from here control shift down and then control backspace so give me that and then comma and then i want you to randomly take numbers from there so i'm going to say rand between random between and then the bottom number is now labeling the the numbers in the column which in, or this is not row one this is row one of the start of the table row one and then to the to to the end of it, which is going to be 500 to 500, right? I could just click that, and then boom, and it's going to close it up for me. And then I can copy that down, and it doesn't work because I took, I didn't uh, absolute reference this, so I'm going to say F4, F4, and F4. This absolute reference them, so this doesn't move down. And this doesn't move down. When I copy it down, let's try it again. Ultra vase. Copy it down. Boom. So there are our uh, random numbers. So notice these will possibly shuffle every time I, I change it, which if you don't want that to happen, you can copy it again. Or let's, let's do it this way. I can copy this whole thing and then paste it down here. One, two, three, just the values. And then, uh, and then that'll give it so there it's a hard coded number. Let's, let's make this blue and bordered. So this is going to be part of our, our actual stuff that we're using. So I'm going to say make this uh, bordered. And if you don't have that blue, it's in the more colors. You don't have to use it, but I like it. Standard color wheel. There it is. Boom. And we could do the same thing here. Let's make this border blue down here. Border blue. Let's make this top bit black and white. Black and white. 
Okay, um, so this is what we actually know. We're imagining we don't know this stuff in red, but we really do because we made it and we understand what's happening behind the scenes. All right, so let's go ahead and select this whole thing. Home tab, let's make a paintbrush and make a skinny H here. And so, so now we're going to say what's going to be uh, N is going to be equal to, this is small N, not the population size, but the sample size. So our sample size was just 10 samples, which is pretty small, which is why the T distribution uh, would be useful rather than the bell curve as this as it gets larger, the T curves will tend towards the bell. So I'm gonna say this is gonna be equal to count and then tab, how many do we have? Control shift down, 10 of them. All right, then the X bar, uh, and this is gonna be the mean x bar mean of sample so i'm going to say this is going to be the mean of the sample now the sample mean hopefully will tend towards the population mean and hopefully will also tend towards if we imagine the mean of all the means right we're, we're approximating so we're going to say this is going to be the average of the samples so we get to 2,584, which is pretty close to the 2,519. So it's not obviously exact, but because we only have a sample of 10, but we'll go with that. And then we got the STD of the sample. So I could take the standard deviation of the sample. We're imagining we don't know the standard deviation of the population. So this will give us our approximation of the standard deviation of the population, right? So this is going to be STD of the sample now control shift down of this data let's add some decimal to make that one a little bit more exact number adding some decimals so there we have uh that one remember with the standard deviation we have the concept of the standard deviation of the population which we know but we're imagining we don't know here we have the standard deviation of the sample which we would think that's going to approximate the standard deviation of the population and then we have the, the standard error, which you can kind of think of as the standard deviation of if we had all possible combinations, in this case of 10, and we took the, the standard deviation of the average of all of those, and that's the thing that usually will tend towards uh, the bell-shaped curve, right? So that's gonna be the idea here. So then we're gonna go, okay, standard deviation, and then we have the number number of samples we only have one uh sample here and then we're going to call this the i'll say i'll call it uh to let's insert to make it fancy a symbol and we'll make this here insert sigma and then i'm going to say of x now now i'm going to click off of it and go back into it so that it doesn't do something funny x bar so sigma x bar is going to be uh equal to that's the standard error so now we're looking at another one that's and i'm going to double click on this and make it even fancier by selecting these ones right click and then i'll format the cell and make it a subscript so basically this is like the standard deviation that we're actually thinking of kind of using not the standard deviation of the population or of the sample, but of the amount, if we were to get all of the X bars, right? If we, if we took every combination of sample size, in this case, 10, and took the averages of all of them and took the average of that, and we can approximate that as we've seen before with a formula. Let's pull that formula from here. So I'm gonna pull this formula in and put it over here. So we see this is the same formula we've seen before, except now you can kind of think that we don't know like the 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 standard deviation of the population. So we have to approximate it with the standard deviation of the sample. So otherwise we're same formula. I'm gonna drop this last bit. We're only gonna do this bit here. So so we're gonna say, all right, this is gonna be equal to then we'll take this is gonna be equal to and we'll take this is going to be the standard deviation I'm going to say of the sample divided by the square root which I do with the sq square root of the number uh, uh, which was uh, 10 
So we'll say 10, enter, close it up, 107. Okay, and then I can say, all right, and then the, the level of significance, level, and we could say it's gonna be like A, which is equals alpha, or a level of significance. And that's gonna be our 5%, which once again is kind of a convention. And I think it kind of went around the idea that normally in a bell-shaped curve within two standard deviations, you have like 95%. So the outside tails is uh, that 5%, right? That it could still be not within, the, within it on, on, a, on a random sample 5% of the time. So the confidence level, then what's the confidence level? Well, it could still be 5% outside, meaning if I took this, if I imagined this curve, we're saying 5% is outside of the range, which could happen basically randomly 5% of the time, which means we have a confidence level of 100% minus the 5% or 95%. So that's gonna be equal to one minus the 0.05, adding some decimals, uh, not there, to here. And so there we have it, 95. And then we've got the alpha divided by two, which is the upper end of the bell. So in other words, if I'm saying 5% is over here and 5% over here, I'm looking at just this end right here, this bit, which is going to be because it's symmetrical, just half of the 5%. So this is going to be equal to the 5% divided by two. And that's going to be number adding some decimals. That's 0.0. Uh, two five. So now we want to take a look at the T, which is the basically number of standard deviations in essence. Now notice usually that would be the Z, right? But now we're not looking at when we think about this curve, you can still kind of imagine like this bell shaped curve, but we're looking at, at slightly different conception of the curve which is gonna be the T distribution due in part to the fact that we're doing confidence intervals and we, have a, and we would do that, uh, we're, we have fairly small sample size. So we're get, we can think of it as basically the same kind of formula in Excel, but it's gonna give us a slightly different possible result because we're, we're using the T rather, rather than the Z. So in other words, this is gonna be equal to, we've got a T dot, inverse so if we take the t dot inverse and we're going to take now i'll start off just taking this one right here and then i'm going to say comma and then it wants the degrees of freedom that's going to help us to determine what's the proper graph that excel is going to basically be using for the t distributions which are all kind of bell shaped but again they have wider tails basically depending on the size of of the sample so I'm gonna take then the, the sample size minus the number of samples. So that gives us nine. And I'm gonna say enter. If I add some decimals, then that would give us kind of the equivalent of uh, the T if I go back on over here up to, we're imagining what that point was. What we, what we want though is to uh, look at the top end. So I'm gonna, so I have to say one minus that. So I'm gonna go back into here and say, okay, I want this going back in and this first bit is gonna be uh, one minus and then enter and it gives us that 2.6, uh, uh, 2622 on in essence the top end. So if you went back over here again, you can imagine what we did before was calculating basically this bit. And then if I said one minus, it's calculating kind of up to like uh, this bit up here giving us the Z in terms of what we would think of as, you know, standard deviations in terms of Z's, but now they're T's because the curve would not be exactly bell shaped. It's going to be a little bit fatter on the tails because we're using different uh, shapes based on the sample size, which were dependent on Excel and the geniuses of the past that are are using the these are deriving this from the different shapes based on these tests and the size of the sample and so on all right so now we're going to say that this is going to be what's our margin of error then margin of uh, error is going to be 
we're going to say the standard uh, the standard error is going to be do, 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 where did I put that right here and then we have 2.6 uh, uh, 2, 2 times this which would be the number of standard deviations up. So I'm going to say there's going to be our uh, margin of error. So if we imagine then our, our interval, the lower X bar for the confidence interval is going to be equal to the middle point. Again, we, we're imagining we don't know the middle point over here. We're approximating the middle point here with the sample that we took. And then we're going to, uh, the lower part is going to be minus the margin of error, giving us the middle point. So I can imagine if it was like a bell curve, it would be the middle point down this way, right? And that's going to be the X's rather than the T's or the Z, the equivalent to the Z uh, in terms of the lower bit. And then we have the upper, upper X bar for confidence interval is going to be the middle point which which we're using the sample middle point plus this time the margin of error so that's going to be the range which again we can kind of imagine would be like this point to this point if these two points were basically our equivalent to the z's or t's at the 2.62 and so on and so forth so then that could give us a phrase something like this so we R, and we're going to say, I'm going to say this is going to be 95%. I'll make it a percent this time. Number group percent. Sure. We're going to say, sure. The, the pop mean is between, and then I'm going to say, let's put it down here between this and this. Just so, so that's, that's kind of like the phraseology that we might have in place, right? Wait, we're 95% sure it could, we could just randomly have 5% outside that, that, that the, that, that, uh, the population mean average number of widgets in a box are between this and this, or you can rephrase that possibly something like this, that you might imagine on a box of widgets, customer can expect average items of average widgets of this amount the middle point that we calculated from our sample which keeps on changing right the two this amount here within the margin of error equal uh, of the margin of error we're going to say is this one right so that's another way that we can you might you can kind of phrase this one all right let's make a graph of this i'm going to make this black uh, uh blue and bordered bordered blue and then i'll make these border blue let's just make this whole thing border blue and then we'll make this border blue do, 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 do. okay okay so now i want to graph this now i'm going to graph this as though it was a normal distribution to get the idea remembering that we're actually using the t distribution but that's a little bit more difficult to graph so i just want to look at it conceptually here uh, with the with the graph just so we get the idea so I'm gonna then say let's make this skinny I'm gonna go to the home tab and make a format painter and put that over here and then let's say we're gonna put the graph uh, graph data I'm gonna say to make the graph I'm gonna say let's make this black and white and I need the lower X and the upper X now I'm going to be pulling the lower and upper X by saying that we're going to say there, there are going to be four standard deviations uh, to, to get the graph data because that will encompass most of the data uh, that we that we want to graph the whole thing, right? So I'm going to say if this is the middle point, I'm going to say the X bar is the 2317 uh, and then we're going to say minus the uh, standard deviations, uh, which I'm going to say is approximated by the standard error here, times this time four of them, because that should encompass the whole curve. And then I'm going to say the upper is going to be the middle point uh, plus the standard error, the amount away from the middle point in terms of X's times deviations, uh, standard deviations four, 
So that's going to be our range. I'm going to make that black, the bordered and blue. Now this is going to keep changing. So if I want to make it static, I'm going to select this, copy it and paste it down here, just the values only. And then I'll right click and paste it again, pasting the formatting so that now it's a static number. So then I'm going to make another skinny, copy in this skinny, home tab, format painter, make that on the skinny N. And then I'm going to make this my X. And then this is going to be my P of X. Now remember, this is uh, estimating, I'm going to make this red up top, home tab, font group, uh, red, because I'm trying to say, hey, look, this is this is actually using the the uh, normal distribution, which isn't quite right because we're using the T's, but it'll give you a general sense of the of how the curve, the shape of the curve, and how you might think of this and differentiate it from the hypothesis testing. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try to uh, put the I'm gonna do this with a sequence, the the, the X is sequence tab, and then I want this minus this plus one. That's how many rows I want, comma. The columns, just one column, comma. And then we want steps, just uh, one step at a time. And then I'm gonna, oh, I'm sorry, the starting point, that's the starting point, is gonna be the lower, and then comma, the steps, one number at a time, enter, boom. You could also just do it this way, two, one, four, eight, two, one, four, nine. Select those two and copy it down. So, so there's not too many of them, so you can kind of do that, but it's a little bit tedious, but it goes down to 2,800. Boom, 2,801, I'm okay with that. This is gonna be equal to the norm.dist. Now again, you would think I would using the T distributions, and there are many of them, T.dist, but it's a little bit more wonky to make the graph because it wants to center around zero. So I will possibly do a comparison of that later but I'm gonna keep with the norm.dist, which isn't exactly right, because the curve's a little bit different, but still has that bell kind of shape to get the general idea. So don't get confused on that. We're gonna take the X comma, the mean, which we're gonna say is this one, F4 on the keyboard, and then comma, the standard deviation, which is gonna be the standard error, F4 on the keyboard to, to freeze it, comma, and then zero, because we don't want it to be cumulative, close it up, enter, and percentify, number group percentify, add some decimals, double click it down, boom. And you can see that we have about 86% of the, of the information under the curve. And that's possibly because we keep on changing our mean here and our, our, our mean and our uh, standard deviations. So this is gonna keep on shuffling our graph around. So now we have currently have 99% under the curve. So it's gonna shuffle around. I'm gonna say, okay, we're okay with that. So then I, if I graph this, I say control shift down, control backspace. Let's just make the area graph. I can go to the insert. You could make a graph like this, right? You could make a graph like a line graph or we could make our area graph. Let's go to the area graph to practice that one. That's the most complete one. Area, area graph. Put this over here. We'll put it like over here somewhere. And then let's make these a little thinner. Do, 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 make that a little skinnier. And then I'm gonna get rid of the title. So there we have that. And so, so like I say, the idea here is that we didn't know what the mean was before. So we're imagining that whatever we got, the middle point that we got, in this case, 2,593 that keeps on changing, uh, is gonna be in the middle. Now I have to change the X's. Let's go to the tab up top, data, and let's go to this data, and then change our X's, control shift down, control backspace. It's not showing up yet, so I'm gonna click on here, and then click on it again, there it goes. So now I'm gonna say, okay, it keeps on shuffling, but there's, so now our middle point is uh, 2,398. So 2,398 around here. And we'd like to say that within a certain range, 
uh, is going to be our confidence interval. Now, remember, this graph would be a little bit thicker if we were talking on the tails, if we were th talking about the T distributions because of the T distributions, but you get the general idea and the difference as to whether we did a hypothesis testing situation where we already know the central point of the data or that's the given and we're trying to prove whether or not that is correct, in which case we would build our curve around the population data, take the sample and see how close that lies to what we originally thought was the case. Now we could also say uh, this, let's make our Z, uh, which is gonna be the Z, not the, the T, but this is gonna be simulating the same kind of calculation as in essence this T test over here. But now, but we're, we're, we're so this is gonna be equal to, we're gonna say then the X minus the middle point, which is gonna be our mean F4 on the keyboard, making that absolute divided by the standard deviation, which we're gonna approximate with the standard error, F4 on the keyboard and close it up. So this would be measuring in Z's, which would be somewhat equivalent to the T's. If this curve was the T <laughs> distribution curve, we're gonna add some decimals there copy it down so there we have that so now the middle point would be uh at zero right if i copy this down doo -doo -doo -doo, there it is right and so i would like to also have my x's over here in x's and as well as the the z score down here to do that i need to plot some other graph so i'm going to say i want my i'm going to try to do a dynamic formula uh, up top for a text formula and we're going to say that this is going to be equal to we want uh, the the uh, the lower is going to be and I'm going to imagine that's going to be this one now. So I want to go from from there uh, is going to be I'm going to put quotes so I can put a text in it. It's going to be uh, less than and then I'm going to say less than and or let's put a quote around it and to tie it together with the value of the quote and then this is going to be the z and then end quote and is going to be quotes less than than this value and then i'm going to say I need a, a quote over this and, or this, and then an and, and then this value. And then I need a, uh, a well, let's leave it at that. What does that do? I need an and right here. And, okay. And then I get this really long thing because it's adding all the decimals but it's saying this number is less than Z, which needs to be less than that. I think that's basically what I want. I'm gonna go back into it and round these numbers. So now I'm gonna embed around right there, around this number and say, this is gonna be comma just to zero places. And then around this number, round this to zero places. And then, so now we have something like that. Z's gotta be greater than this one and less than that, which we're approximating the Z to be similar to the concept of a T, right? Let's make this red, white, and center. Actually, this should be X here. So I'm gonna go back up top and say that should be X, but I need to apply a different series of data and have a different graph here so that I can apply a, a, another or second X axis to it. So I'm gonna go back on over here and say, all right, this is gonna be our logic test. We're gonna say that this X has to be between these two numbers that are gonna keep on basically shuffling around. We can do that with a logic test. It's gonna be equal to if tab two logic tests. Therefore, I'm gonna embed an and here to do the two logic tests. I want this number, this X has to be uh, greater than, it has to be greater than the floor of that 2177 and that's going to be the next one in the and function the next logic test this number again has to be less than uh this number here that the top ceiling bit closing that up that's our and function 
and then comma, what do you want us to do if that is correct? That's going to be give us the P of X. And then comma, what do you want us to do if it's not, if that's not correct or not true? Quotes, a space, quote, just give me a space, close it up. Now, I'm also going to have to have absolute references on this one, the ones in column J, because those are not going to move down when I copy it down. Therefore, F4 on the keyboard here. This one's in column J, F4 on the keyboard on that one. Dollar signs and then enter. Hold on a second. This last bit should be closing up the brackets. I hit the wrong button. And then enter. All right, let's go back on it. I'm going to make it a percent, add some decimals, and then copy it down. And then scroll down to see it should be showing up around here, right? So when this is at the 2277, uh, it starts to show up. So if I graph that, it's going to be the middle part of the graph over here. So let's add that data chart. We're going to go to the data. I'm going to add a data series. It's going to be this will be the name of it. Closing this out, selecting this control shift down, control backspace brings me back uh, to in essence the top of it. Let's scroll all the way up. It's not showing up yet. So I'm going to click here and then go back onto it and then OK and then OK. So there it goes. Now it shows up. So now this middle bit, if I double click on it, I'm going to make a secondary axis and then close that up. It puts this thing on the side. I don't want that. So I'm going to delete that. That's not what I wanted you to do. And then we're going to go to the data again. On this second data series, that's what I'm going to apply the secondary axis to. So I'm going to go to this side now and say that's where I want my Z's here. Control shift down, control backspace to get back to the top, which doesn't quite get me totally to the top for some reason. And then I'm going to click here and then on it again until I can see it showing up on this side. OK. And then OK. It doesn't show up down here yet until I hit the plus button. Axes. I want the secondary horizontal. There it is, but I want it at the bottom. So I'm going to say more options. Make sure I have this one selected. Labels, I want these at the bottom. Bring it low and then OK. And so there we have it. So hopefully I got that picture correct. I just want to practice making this graph multiple times. Remember, and once again, this is not exactly the proper graph because it would be the, the T distribution, which would have a slightly different shape, but look quite similar. The idea here still being, though, we're kind of making a range around that middle point that we have uh, chosen here, which we can measure either in the X's and then the range around the X's or in Z values, which if it was the T distribution would be uh, the T values. And that's how, how we're kind of envisioning our range. Remember, you can compare and contrast that to a hypothesis test where you're imagining that you already know the range and you're trying to and you're trying to build your your bell curve based on what is known and seeing how far off your sample is or the confidence intervals. Can you can kind of think of them as though you took the mean that we got and then we thought of every mean around it as though we're doing a hypothesis test for every mean around it to see if the tail is still within reason to our sample, which is kind of backing in, which means you get a confident intervals measured by the two peaks. But again, that's tedious to do. So it would be useful if we can take what we got and make that the center point and make an interval around it, which is doable, but uh, useful to use the T distributions, especially if the sample size is small is the general idea. All right. Let's select all of these, control shift down. Let's make this uh, bordered and blue. And there it is.